Jangan kau pandang bibir yang manis Karena dia bisa menghancurkan Jangan kau pandang wajah yang indah Karena dia bisa meracunmu Dengarlah hai teman Dengarkan bersama Aku menulis bukan karena nama Karena sifat kasih pada sesama insan Dan menyatakan kasih sayangku Kita sama, semuanya sama Apa yang ada hanyalah kehidupan Yes, bukan kerana nama So from that era, you know, the, your solo era Which particular song resonates quite heavily with you? Actually, it's, uh, bukan kerana nama, it's not my song But I'm looking for a song that I know what I want So I will, I'm quite open to all, all, all the composer How young he is, how old it is, how popular he is But still, the song must go into my theme, my concept So when I listen to that demo, I I can feel it. Okay, I'm gonna do it with string and you know the market, the lack of this in the Malay market and local market. I I still remember when I got into my friend's car, he opened up his uh, the radio station every 45 minutes. Ah, bukan kan nama. I go to um, the Malaysia the, the pasar malam the so the night market. Everybody was playing the song. Okay, so that is part of story, lah. So you had several stepping stones. Yeah. Right. Um, with each step that you've taken, how much of the past do you bring with you, and how much of the future do you bring into your music? The past is is the foundation, and the the, the spirit, and the energy, and the experience that I've gone through. The past is very, very important because there is no uh, so-called, you can't get it in a college or in a university. You have to go through yourself, through your experience. And uh, on the other music, I'm very open to listen to all kinds of music. I always tell myself, if you don't like this song, this album, or this artist, don't empty. You must respect, it is not my kind. So you open up more. How, how challenging was it for you? Because you had a band, and then you're solo. You're on your own. You're carrying your own weight. When I go into solo, I know I'm I'm getting. I think people are forgetting the sweet charity. And but I know that some hardcore sweet charity fans show me lots of bad signs when I do concert. Okay, never mind. One day you will love me and you will like me because you know me, but you don't understand. The best part, I think, when I do. Sweet Charity concert, I will never do sing my Ramli Salib song. But my concert, I will do Sweet Charity song because it's part of me. I love Sweet Charity, I like Sweet Charity, and Sweet Charity is a part of me. Ramli Salib, like everywhere now, they want to listen to Ramli Salib, but they want to have a little bit of so called uh, tidbits. Uh, huh? Uh, they want a bit of sweet charity classic. That is. From the early days when you started, you were kind of a rebel figure, right? In terms of society. Okay. Long hair, uh, okay. longer. Uh, the stories are there, but you're not. Good question. Your hair, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And today you are accepted by the establishment. You have been conferred the Dattoship in Malaysia. Okay. You've just been honored with a lifetime award when okay. you met the ministers. Uh, what do you think you've done differently, or what have you done to bridge this, this you know, make this big jump? I, I'm a very peace guy. I'm very always forgive and forget. And, but at the same time, I have my philosophy, where I think uh, it's not right for me. I'm 40 years old, you ask me how to cut my hair, when to cut my hair, and it's a bit strange. Eh? That is where the soul journey, the, the spiritual side, uh, really, uh, touch me where I experience this 
very, you know, you see, I got a goosebump here because it's like, okay, when they, they don't play my song, they throw my album, they give it to anybody, what I know from people inside. Uh, if you engage Rambi Sarip, means you are into, uh, supporting him. So, I know I got kind of like, I've been squeezed in a way that it's not, if I'm in that level, I can demonstrate myself, I do demonstration, I will do. But it's no good because I know it's make me uh, popular, but I'm going to waste so many things. So I stay quiet. I, uh, there's one time where I want to write my own song for some, I know, but I can't. Nearly about eight months, nine months, I cannot write cannot compose even a, a simple song. What I have done, uh, a big scene or what, huh? so, and that's something, uh, a, a soft voice touched me, saying that you should be thankful and don't get angry and don't uh, say, so uh, don't get rebel with all this, this is a very minor thing, something like that. So, I say to myself that I'm saying to God, if I did wrong, if I say something is not right, please forgive me. And it was 1998, where the album Shiny Timur come like, it's not a big thing, but it's a, a turning point for me, where it was uh, selected to perform at the Womet and playing at 45 minutes at the main stage for the local is something big. You must have the belief, the passion, responsibility, thankful. Everything must be there. The talent is not enough. You must have the discipline and open up your mind to listen to all kinds of things. Every month I spend about four to five hundred dollars, maybe not much, but still money. All, to, all the, the books are talking about the, the no, uh, it's not uh, any any books about music and life. I will try to have some time to read, and I think it's very near to what my lifestyle is. Especially when we talk about heavy question, uh, heavy uh, uh, bands or artists when they they, they do the interviews. Uh, what the question and the answer is slightly 80% is what I've gone through. So I learned from that. Yeah. Which books in particular have uh, affected you or influenced you? Oh, recently my daughter present me on my birthday on the Satana, the Global Tune. It was beautiful uh, books and I was, but because I'm into colors actually, and of course I read all the stone, philosophy, uh, Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, yes, because they got different kind of style, different kind of feelings and different kind of approach and you must, uh, I'm not really into Pink Floyd during the, the, the days but I, I try to understand more and, and I'm into, I listen more Pink Floyd now to keep me patient and understand so you need to have kind of understanding to like the song. Not everybody can just go, oh, because of Pink Floyd, I'm wearing Pink Floyd, you are, you are hip or you are there. No, no, no. It's about to understand about the calmness, the artistic value, the psychedelic point of it. Yeah. So where's your, who's your audience today? Everybody, yeah. <laughs> everybody is my, is my audience. Like uh, some places, of course, not in Singapore, but Singapore people are more now, they look up more on me because a bit of, okay, Ramdi Salik is a figure that they can relate to the music scene, to the, the, the outside of the country. But if, if Indonesia, they got these people, if Malaysia, they got they got. But I represent of this area. So uh, the kids, when, when uh, uh, when a, 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 a couple said, my son, uh, really like your song. Can you say something? You know, because of his birthday, you know, and uh, now, you know, you got all this, uh, the new technology thing. And uh, it's like, okay, when kids are like, seven years old, come and grab you, they don't take photo. Oh, this is like, okay, this is my grandchildren. Uh. Uh, how can they understand all this? Uh? When, last week, I go to uh, Sabah, Kota Kinabalu, on my way back to KL in a plane. I saw this very beautiful 
so-called uh, design, the God design, the clouds. The design is so beautiful, I've never seen before. And that's why it's why if I have a phone now, I will definitely, I wanted to get my assistant, my, my crew to, because I'm sitting at the business class to go outside and people might say what this guy is doing at the, you know, economy. So I a bit not sad lah, because I say, okay, I need to have that confidence to change and like, understand the technology now.